Elon Musk revealed very interesting unknown details about the moon landing, and he explained what people don't realize about the moon landing, people who doubt whether it was real or not. The truth is that according to new leaks, there are a lot of classified files, unknown details, and hidden evidence that will forever end this debate about whether the moon landing was real or not. In a recent interview, Elon Musk talked exactly about this issue. This is a very interesting story, so let's explain it. So, on July the 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong took one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, as he became the first person to set foot on the moon. The Apollo 11 mission is held as one of humanity's greatest achievements, but even more than five decades later, there remains a small group of skeptics who firmly believe the moon landing was an elaborate hoax. Photography anomalies form a significant aspect of the conspiracy theories surrounding the moon landing. Critics argue that the photographs and videos released by NASA contain inconsistencies, suggesting that the entire event was staged. However, a closer examination of these claims reveals that they are often based on misunderstandings or misinterpretation to the photographic evidence. One common argument put forth by skeptics is the perceived inconsistency in lighting and shadows in the moon landing photographs. They contend that multiple light sources, such as studio lights, must have been used to achieve the specific lighting effects seen in the images. However, this argument fails to acknowledge the unique lighting conditions on the lunar surface. Unlike Earth, the Moon lacks a significant atmosphere to scatter and diffuse sunlight. As a result, the lighting on the Moon is much harsher and more direct. Shadows appear darker and more defined, and light sources cast sharp, well-defined shadows, even in seemingly unconventional directions. The absence of atmospheric diffusion also means that there are no ambient light sources to illuminate the dark areas. Consequently, objects in shadow may appear completely black, contributing to the perception of inconsistent lighting. The Moon's surface itself is highly reflective. The lunar regolith, composed of fine dust and rocks, reflects sunlight and contributes to the overall illumination of the environment. This characteristic can result in indirect or diffused light bouncing off the surface, leading to additional light sources and unconventional shadows. In addition, flag movement is a notable element in the conspiracy theories surrounding the moon landing, often emphasized by skeptics as proof of a staged event. According to their argument, the movement observed in the American flag planted on the lunar surface implies the existence of wind, which they assert is unfeasible in the vacuum of space. Nevertheless, upon closer analysis of the flag movement, a more reasoned interpretation emerges when taking into account the characteristics of the flag and the actions undertaken by the astronauts. The American flag deployed during the Apollo missions was specifically designed for the lunar environment. It was made of a lightweight material, nylon, to ensure easily handling and deployment by the astronauts. The flag was also equipped with a horizontal rod along the top edge, which provided structure and kept the flag fully extended. When the astronauts planted the flag in the lunar soil, they encountered some resistance due to the stiffness of the fabric and the limited flexibility of the horizontal rod. To overcome this resistance and create the impression of a flag being firmly planted, the astronauts moved it back and forth while inserting it into the lunar surface. This deliberate motion resulted in the flag appearing to ripple or wave slightly. In the absence of a significant atmosphere on the moon, there is no wind or air resistance to dampen or dissipate the flag's movements. As a result, even small movements or perturbations would generate prolonged oscillations, making the flag appear as if it was moving more than it actually was. The lack of air friction means that the flag's motion would persist for a longer duration compared to what we typically observe on Earth. It is also worth noting that the flag's movement in the videos of the moon landing may appear exaggerated due to the nature of the footage itself. The videos captured by the astronauts and transmitted back to Earth had a lower frame rate, typically about 12 frames per second. This lower frame rate could accentuate the perception of flag movement, making it seem more pronounced than it actually was. The absence of an atmosphere means that the flag would not settle into the static position as quickly as it would on Earth. On Earth, the resistance of the air would quickly dampen any movements, leading to a more stable flag. However, on the airless moon, the flag's oscillations would persist for a longer time, contributing to the perception of continued movement. Also, skeptics have raised concerns about the lack of stars in the moon landing photographs, asserting that this absence indicates the staging of the event. Nonetheless, a more thorough analysis of the situation, taking into account the specific circumstances and technical factors, 
offers a reasonable explanation for the absence of stars in the captured images. When capturing the Moon's surface and the astronauts in the bright sunlight, the cameras used during the Apollo missions were adjusted for fast exposure times and small apertures. These settings were necessary to correctly expose the highly contrasting scene and prevent overexposure. However, the downside of these camera settings was that they limited the amount of light entering the lens, making it challenging to capture the faint light emitted by stars. On the Moon's surface, the sunlight reflected off the lunar landscape and the astronauts themselves created a significantly brighter environment compared to the dimly lit stars in the background. The exposure settings that were optimized for the brightly lit subjects resulted in the stars being considerably underexposed or even invisible in the photographs. With that, the film used in the cameras had limited sensitivity to low light conditions, making it even more difficult to capture the relatively faint starlight. To enhance the visibility of the astronauts and the surface details, the cameras were not optimized for capturing distant celestial objects, such as stars. The dynamic range of the photographs played a role in diminishing the visibility of stars. The stark contrast between the bright, lit lunar surface and the dark expanse of space made it challenging to capture both accurately in a single photograph. To capture the intricate details on the Moon's surface, the cameras were optimized for exposing the brighter areas, inadvertently leading to the dimmer stars being masked by the extreme contrast. It is important to note that the absence of stars in the Moon landing photographs does not imply that stars were not visible from the lunar surface. Astronauts on subsequent missions and astronomers observing from Earth have attested to the visibility of stars in the lunar sky. The limitations in capturing the stars in the moon landing photographs were primarily due to the specific camera settings and exposure conditions necessary to capture the astronauts and the lunar landscape effectively. The moon landing conspiracy theories include concerns about radiation hazards, with skeptics contending that the presence of the Van Allen radiation belt surrounding the Earth would have made a moon landing impossible. However, a thorough evaluation of scientific knowledge regarding radiation and the precautionary measures implemented by NASA provides a more comprehensive understanding of the actual radiation risks involved and the feasibility of the Apollo missions. The Van Allen radiation belts, discovered by physicist James Van Allen in 1958, are regions of intense radiation surrounding the Earth. These belts consist of charged particles, primarily electrons and protons, trapped by the Earth's magnetic field. Skeptics claim that the high levels of radiation present in the belts would have been lethal to the astronauts, rendering a moon landing impossible. In reality, NASA scientists extensively studied the Van Allen radiation belts before the Apollo missions to understand their characteristics and potential risks. They carefully planned the trajectories of the Apollo spacecraft to minimize the astronauts' exposure to radiation. By calculating the timing and path of the missions, NASA aimed to traverse the thinnest parts of the radiation belts, reducing the duration of exposure. What's more, the Apollo spacecraft were equipped with shielding measures to protect the astronauts from radiation. The spacecraft's walls incorporated materials like aluminium and other metals, which effectively attenuated the radiation and reduced the astronauts' exposure. The crew modules, where the astronauts spent most of their time, provided additional shielding. While the radiation levels in the Van Allen belts are indeed significant, the exposure during a typical Apollo mission was relatively brief. The spacecraft traveled through the belts at high speeds, spending only a short time within them. This limited exposure, combined with the shielding measures, reduced the potential health risks posed by radiation. It is worth noting that the radiation doses received by the Apollo astronauts were carefully monitored and measured. NASA collected and analyzed data from decimeters worn by the astronauts during their missions, which provided valuable information on the radiation levels they encountered. These measurements, along with subsequent analysis and research, helped refine the understanding of radiation hazards in space exploration. Furthermore, independent cooperation serves as a crucial aspect in debunking the moon landing conspiracy theories. The Apollo moon landings were witnessed by millions of people worldwide, including scientists, engineers, and astronomers from various countries, not solely limited to the United States. The extensive international involvement in tracking and communicating with the Apollo missions provides compelling evidence that supports the authenticity of the moon landings. During the Apollo missions, NASA established a network of tracking stations around the globe to ensure continuous communication with the spacecraft. These tracking stations were not limited to the United States, 
but was strategically positioned in various countries, including Australia, Spain, and several countries in Africa and South America. These stations independently received and transmitted signals from the Apollo spacecraft, monitoring their trajectories and capturing crucial data. One of the most notable tracking stations was the Parkes Observatory in Australia. During the Apollo 11 mission, Parkes played a vital role in receiving the television signals of Neil Armstrong's historic first steps on the moon. The images received by Parkes were broadcasted globally and witnessed by millions of people, providing real-time visual evidence of the moon landing. Other countries and organizations independently tracked the Apollo missions using their own equipment and facilities. The Soviet Union, a competitor to the United States in the space race, closely monitored the Apollo missions to gather intelligence and ensure the missions did not pose a threat. The fact that the Soviet Union, with its advanced space program and resources, did not raise any credible objections or accusations of a hoax adds further weight to the authenticity of the moon landings. The Apollo missions left a tangible mark on the lunar surface in the form of experiments and equipment. For example, reflectors were placed on the moon to enable precise measurements of the Earth-Moon distance using laser technology. These reflectors have been used by independent international observatories, including ones from countries such as France and Italy, to verify the presence of the Apollo equipment and confirm the successful moon landings. The international collaboration, involvement, and independent cooperation from various countries and organizations make it highly implausible that a vast conspiracy involving thousands of individuals could have successfully hidden a staged moon landing. The sheer number of people, scientific institutions, and governments with first-hand knowledge and access to mission data makes it highly improbable that such a deception could have been orchestrated without any substantial leaks or credible evidence surfacing over the years. Moon rock samples obtained during the Apollo missions play a significant role in dispelling the moon landing conspiracy theories. The collection and study of these rocks have provided substantial evidence supporting the authenticity of the moon landings and have yielded invaluable insights into the geology and history of the moon. During the Apollo missions, the astronauts collected over 360 kilograms of lunar rock and soil samples from different locations on the moon's surface. These samples were meticulously catalogued, sealed, and returned to Earth for analysis. The distribution of these moon rock samples to various countries further strengthens the credibility of the missions, as it would have been implausible for multiple nations to collude in fabricating moon rock samples. The examination of the moon rocks involved a collaborative effort by scientists from around the world. Thousands of researchers from various countries, including geologists, chemists, and astrophysicists, have studied the lunar samples extensively. These scientists employed a wide range of analytical techniques to investigate the composition, age, and origin of the moon rocks. The analysis of moon rock samples revealed several distinct characteristics that are unique to lunar materials. For instance, the rocks exhibit specific isotope compositions that differ from those found on Earth. The presence of specific isotopes and elements, such as helium-3, and certain rare Earth elements, indicates a history of exposure to cosmic radiation and a lack of significant geological activity. According to experts, the moon rocks display evidence of extensive meteorite impacts, known as impact breccia, which are composed of fragments of various rock types cemented together by the heat and pressure generated by the impacts. The impact breccia provide insights into the moon's violent past and its geological evolution over billions of years. Moon rocks contain small glass beads, called agglutinates, which are formed by the intense heat generated during meteorite impacts. These glass beads have a distinctive texture and chemical composition that is unique to lunar materials and further substantiates their origin from the moon's surface. The study of the moon rock samples also revealed the presence of small amounts of water molecules and volatiles. This discovery challenged previous assumptions about the moon's dryness and provided important insights into the moon's history and the potential for future lunar exploration. The distribution of moon rock samples to scientists worldwide has allowed for independent verification and analysis, ensuring that the findings are not confined to a single source. The global scientific community's consensus on the authenticity and scientific value of the moon rock samples stands as a testament to their credibility. Additionally, technological limitations represent a key aspect that debunks the moon landing conspiracy theories. Skeptics often argue that the technological capabilities during the 1960s were insufficient to stage such an elaborate hoax.
A deeper exploration of the technological context of the time reveals the practical impossibility of faking the moon landing. In the 1960s, the available technology was considerably less advanced compared to the present day. Computers, for instance, were bulky, slow, and had limited processing power. The Apollo guidance computer, used in the Apollo spacecraft, had a fraction of the computing power of even the simplest modern-day devices. It would have been unfeasible to create the intricate simulations required to replicate the complexities of a moon landing using the limited computing resources available at the time. The imaging technology of the era had its own limitations. The cameras used during the Apollo missions were specifically designed for space travel and had restricted capabilities compared to contemporary cameras. These cameras were not equipped with autofocus or sophisticated exposure control mechanisms, requiring the astronauts to manually adjust settings while wearing bulky gloves. Capturing the intricate details of the lunar surface, astronaut movements, and the complexities of the environment with such rudimentary imaging technology would have been an extraordinary challenge for any stage production. Special effects techniques, such as those used in modern filmmaking, were in their infancy during the 1960s. The level of realism and visual fidelity achievable at the time pales in comparison to the sophistication of present-day CGI and computer-generated effects. Creating a convincing simulation of the moon's surface, the physics of lunar gravity, and the interactions between the astronauts and their surroundings would have been an enormous undertaking beyond the technological capabilities of the era. The moon landing conspiracy theories often overlook the extensive infrastructure and human resources required to stage such an elaborate hoax. The successful execution of a moon landing hoax would have necessitated the involvement and cooperation of thousands of individuals, including astronauts, engineers, scientists, technicians, and support staff. The sheer scale of such a conspiracy makes it highly improbable that it could have been orchestrated and maintained without significant leaks or whistleblowers coming forward over the course of several decades. The moon landing missions were subject to intense international scrutiny, particularly during the height of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union closely monitored the Apollo missions with a vested interest in exposing any potential hoax or propaganda. The absence of credible objections from the Soviet Union, despite their advanced space program and resources, further diminishes the likelihood of a staged moon landing. Moreover, the moon landing had a profound impact on Elon Musk, as it did on many others of his generation and beyond. Although born a decade after the monumental event, the achievements of the Apollo missions remained a significant influence throughout his life. In his many speeches and interviews, Musk has frequently acknowledged the profound influence the moon landing had on him, inspiring him to look beyond our planet and ignite his interest in space exploration. Musk's respect for the Apollo missions pioneers is evident. He often refers to the daring spirit and scientific rigor of the teams involved. For Musk, the moon landing represents an emblem of human potential, underlying our ability to overcome seemingly insurmountable challenges through collaboration, intelligence, and a shared aspiration. Musk's company, SpaceX, was founded with a revolutionary objective to make life multiplanetary. His ambitions reflect the legacy of the moon landing in its quest to explore uncharted frontiers of space. SpaceX's innovative approach to reusable rockets and cost-effective manufacturing processes echo the spirit of innovation that enabled the moon landing over 50 years ago. The mission planned by SpaceX to land humans on the moon by 2024, known as Artemis, demonstrates Musk's commitment to continue the legacy of the moon landing. In his perspective, this mission is not just a repetition of past glory, but a stepping stone toward establishing a sustainable colony on Mars. Thus, the moon for Musk, serves as both a homage to historical milestones and a gateway to future interplanetary expansion. He has repeatedly stated his belief that humanity has a responsibility to continue exploring space, not just for scientific or economic reasons, but for our species survival. In his own words, we must become a spacefaring civilization, or we are going to be stuck on one planet until it goes into the sun. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.